In 2002, the United Nations Convention on Biological Diversity adopted a global strategy for plant conservation, and that contained 16 targets on what plant conservation needed to be achieved by 2010. Target one of the global strategy for plant conservation is an accessible working list of all known plant species. Q and Missouri Botanical Garden have been working on this over the last two years with partners worldwide produce such a list. The idea is to produce a list of all of the species that uh, have been published and uh, provide a benchmark or a, a starting place for uh, all the plant names that we know. Q had made very significant progress with its collaborators in developing lists family by family, compiling and sending them out for expert review. And Missouri too had made great progress with their collaborators, working on a more regional approach. And we realised that if we combine the data sets that we had internally with those of other collaborators, we probably had most of the information we needed to make this working list, but the challenge was to put it all together. The idea was to get those two groups of data together, merge them into a single list, and then try to come up with a way to evaluate those species based on uh, some analytical approach. It's a great achievement for this first ever list to become available. We ultimately depend on plants and the better we understand them, the better job we can do of sustaining them. The plant list is a really major step forward in terms of botanical science. It provides for the first time a, a basic checklist of what, what plants are on the planet, uh, which can be used for so many purposes, planning conservation action, looking at the economic importance of plants and so on. The plant list can be used by all those that are interested in finding out information about plants. It provides a mechanism for unambiguous communication and it fac facilitates finding out information using all names which may pertain to a particular plant species. These scientific names are fundamentally important for us to be able to communicate uh, ambiguously in a scientific way with one another about plants and everything that we know about them. We have over a million names of plants, but because they were developed over a long period of time and there were uh, events that happened like this, the geographical species concept where people would go into uh, particular countries and just assume that all the plants in that country were going to be new and describe them as new. Imagine trying to find everything that's been published about a plant, uh, which chemicals are found within it, whether it's poisonous or not, where is it found? And this sort of information is published in many books and in all sorts of places across the, the internet. But to find that information, you need to know all of the different scientific names that have been used for it. There's another medicinal plant, it's a relative of the basil, called Plectranthus, widely used in traditional medicine in Africa. We did a piece of work and we found out if you only use one name, you only get about 20% of the information available. But by searching for all the names that we know which pertain to this plant, we can find out all the information. So it's critical when we're trying to find out information about plants, for science, for conservation, to work out how to use these plants sustainably we must be aware of all the names. We've never had a list of plants for the whole world. There's nothing authoritative to which people can turn when they want to get a correct name or they want to know what names are regarded generally as being equivalent to other names, what we call synonyms. So the plant list will now help botanists, but especially non-botanists, providing a central reference point for them to turn to. Uh, it's complete in that we have more than a million scientific plant names in there, and almost 50% of those are assigned as synonyms of one another. All of the names that have been applied to the species of plants that we know about are included in the list, and none have been thrown out arbitrarily. There are some that are not validly published, and of course there are many that are synonyms equivalent to other names and not the prime name chosen for that species. The first challenge for us was detecting the same name in different databases when they might have been included in slightly different ways or abbreviated. The idea we came up with was to use all of the resources that we had in a digital form, uh, databases if you will, 
and uh, try to find a way to synthesize them together and kind of uh, uh, duplicate the kind of thought work that would go into uh, put it, pull it, or merging together a lot of this information. It isn't easy to do something like this, uh, particularly when, you know, it's really never been done before. The second challenge was that where the same name was occurred in more than one database, it might have been used in different ways. In other words, the different databases that we brought together had conflicting opinions expressed within them. So we needed to detect those conflicting opinions and then in some way resolve them. And so we established a set of decision rules trying to imitate the decision-making process that botanists would use. Using some uh, what we would call rules or decision rules writing some programs that then uh, read all these various sources of data and then applied these rules and came up with a, a, a decision of amongst the conflicting uh, opinions which one would be the best one. The key successes for this project have been diverse. I think one really important thing was the ability to develop a set of rules that would enable us to automatically mimic the behavior of a botanist resolving conflicts in names and then developing an approach that enabled us to build on the work of other specialist groups who had produced lists for families or areas already. Just physically getting all those names together into one place, more than a million names at species level, was a success in our terms. I think it is a major achievement to have done this, and also it provides us an example of how a target can bring together a community. We'll be able to devote much more time to studying the plants, learning about them, and describing their characteristics, and very importantly in an age of rapid change, conserving them. So the list is a tremendous asset to human abilities to work with plants, to utilize their properties, and to save them as the 21st century rolls along. I think the uses of the plant list in the future will be very diverse. It's already been used for global biodiversity monitoring, as for instance in the sample thread listing. Um, I think we will use it for the original intent described in Tablet 1 as a basis for word flora. Botanists will use it as a starting point for more detailed studies on particular families or gender. But beyond the plant systematics community, I think there's a huge range of users who will use it simply to check names so they can then go on to find more information about that particular plant under all the names by which it's been known. It's available online for anybody in the world to get to it. Having an understanding of the diversity of plants is absolutely essential to planning their conservation.